Did you know that Lake of Rage Podcast now has merged? At doomed-gaming.com, which is down below in the description, we have a shirt and sticker available to you. Use code LAKE for 10% off your first order of some Lake of Rage podcast merch. And if this sells well, we're going to add some more designs in the future. Now, on to the show. Yo, and welcome to the 141st episode of Lake of Rage Pokemon Trade Card Game Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Kevin Clementi, a.k.a. Mellow underscore Magikarp. I'm joined today by two very special temporary guest hosts joining us for too many times. Because if you're watching on YouTube, you can see them. If you're listening and you, why is Mellow cracking up during this intro? These two are purely ridiculous and miming what I am doing. <laughs> we have the one and only Alex Cook and James Arnold, Alex, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right. Thanks for asking. James, how are you doing today? Oh, you know, never better. I'm I'm always ready to talk about uh, the Pokemon trading card game and everything related to it or not. <laughs> I appreciate both of you for joining us because we have, uh, we were talking about this a little bit before. It is a downtime in the Pokemon trading card game, right? We have a tournament coming up in Europe, one after that in Brazil, one after that in North America, and none of us care because this format's been going on for four and five months. <laughs> <laughs> Look, listeners, if you care, you can leave a comment on the YouTube video. But I, I know several of you are also like, I'm just going to keep playing Zard or Mew or whatever. So we've got a slightly more fun episode for you. We're going to be talking about some what if scenarios. It'll make sense when we get there. But we're going to talk about what if something had or hadn't happened that wouldn't have. So we're going to get a little bit of Pokemon trading card game history for all of you. And of course, uh, if you've listened to any episodes with either of these two, they're going to get a lot of information and speculation that may or may not have any merit in it beyond old men yell at clouds. Uh, yeah, we don't even know, so it's really well, going to be up to you guys to decide. I can't believe we didn't put a joke in there about the filler episode. Like we just we needed someone to we needed some, we need two people this week, and we just you know those episodes here. where Goku has to play baseball. Like that's welcome to okay. our baseball. Excuse game. me, I love those episodes. <laughs> <laughs> The well, one, there you go. The People one, are going to love this one. It is rent-free in my head, the scene where Gohan is going to high school, and the guy winds up, throws an incredibly fast pitch. It just hits Gohan, who's not even phased. And he's like, oh, I get to go to first base? And then he's just in his head. He's like, I got to make it on base without anyone knowing how strong I was. <laughs> Everyone's just so shocked <laughs> he just took this ball with no issue. I love it. Anyway, uh, we're going to talk. The first what if we have is what if the ELO system for world invites didn't go away or what if we still had it? So anyone else who's a newer player like me, which is something I get to say when both of you are on and who's a newer player like me <laughs> does not know what the system is. I have a feeling these two are going to lead us into the what is it and what would the game be like if we had this instead of the championship point requirements? So, James, since you side, why don't you start us off on this one? <laughs> Well, the ELO system was a system that they moved towards after the, in the Nintendo era, the first few years that you would gain world's invites by certain placements at specific tournaments. So you would go to a tournament, win that tournament, get an invitation to worlds, and it would all happen at the end of the year. Everything from cities or until the gym challenge season, which was like the two to three months before nationals, uh, had nothing to do with worlds. And then they would have the gym challenge season, you'd win that tournament, or you'd go to a regional and you'd place in the top four, top eight, whatever it was at that specific year, get your invite to Worlds. Uh, and that's how Worlds invites were decided. They moved to the ELO system, which was, is the uh, same system that chess uses to rank people. Um, and that is a system where every single win at every single event or loss uh, impacts your rating. Everyone at the very beginning of the season or whenever they start their season, starts with the same rating. And then if you beat someone, depending on what their rating is, your rating will go up a certain amount or it will go down a certain amount. And what ends up happening is the more and more points that you acquire throughout the year, uh, if you lost a game of Pokemon, you know, a game known for not having a massive amount of variance or anything to <laughs> someone that may have less points than you throughout the year, uh, you would lose a significant amount of points and they would gain a significant amount of points. Uh, and so what this encouraged a lot of time was people to 
play a lot of events early in the in or smaller events, gain a lot of points, and then stop playing, and then begin going to tournaments, going 5-0. I know I have a friend that went 6-0 at Nats one year and dropped from the tournament because that locked them for their world's invite. But if they had lost a single game after going 6-0 and in best of one, this is when the entire game was best of one, uh, they would have lost their world's invite after starting that tournament 6-0 and if they lost one game. Uh, so it created a very interesting dynamic throughout all of the years of ELO until I believe it was 2012 when they finally switched over to the championship point season. Yeah, yeah right around there. Um, I think it, I think the biggest impact uh, that we saw was its locals. Like your local events, like matter way more and are far more scary because Terrifying. you have you have those randos that like play like whatever, right? You start dead against them. They're at sixteen hundred. You could lose a big chunk of points from getting donked by a pokey dad like right away, and like that's terrifying because like at least at regionals you knew that like a handful of players were like prepped for it so you could kind of expect the meta and when the regionals were only 200 people you're like okay cool i know what like half the people are playing we're gonna just figure it out from there but locals were scary and, and you there were a lot of bad feelings and not to make this about me but uh <laughs> hey, it's hey it's our episode it's our episode that's can, fair that's fair uh oh, yeah. In 2011, uh, I may or may not have only played one event at a local size event at the beginning of the season and then gone on to top eight nationals that year, uh, severing many people from their world's invite each time that I beat them along the way. Uh, and it actually, I ended the season after having not played the entire season just from playing I had like 20 points or something from the locals at the beginning of the year. I ended the season in the top 32 in North America rankings from just like destroying people at nationals in the ratings and just taking so many of their points. And it was funny for me, but awful for them. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> and so I think that it is definitely net positive that, uh, that system is not what we use. Um, 100%. But I, th I think that if we had continued using it, I don't believe that we would have, the, we would be able to sustain the same structure of events that we have now. The, the same amount of league challenges and league cups would make that system so much more of a nightmare than it already is. I, I think you would genuinely see people at the top of the rankings flying out to places that have like four person league cups like and that just being how they chase their invite unironically because so, i mean i think on i think on one hand like i i don't i'm not trying to like defend the elo system by any stretch i think yeah i think what we have right now is better than the yes. ELO system. i don't think it's perfect oh, um, i definitely don't <laughs> no definitely not but different episode Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, but if the, if the question is like, what if ELO hadn't changed and for some stroke of luck, we are still at the mass of numbers that we are at now. I think your, I think your local scenes are impacted far more. Yeah. I don't think you have people, um, going to Toronto cups and challenges every single week, which makes LGSs not as profitable or important or, like, I think more people stop carrying Pokemon because they're like, well, no one's showing up for our Cups and Challenges. And I think that's, like, where the what if, like, really truly lies is in the local card game scene, if it was an ELO thing. Because um, we can still, because I, I, I still think there are people out there that are like, oh, cool, uh, you can get 10 grand from winning a regionals. And, yeah. like, I think that changes the motivation a little bit because back in the ELO days, you didn't have these big cash payouts. And so it's like, well, the wins are more important because the prestige of a world's invite is more important. But now that you get money with commas in the price, amounts of money rather than a booster box for winning some of these things, 
Yeah, like, I mean, top eight at Nats that year got a seven hundred and fifty dollars scholarship and a box of black and white. Woo. For top eight of Nats, so like in comparison, it's just a completely different world, and and that's that's to even say back then every event was free entry, every event yeah. the entire year, regardless of size, regardless if it was a regional, uh, league cup size tournament, every event was free to enter, and you still saw people just choosing to not play the game after a certain point if they got to a certain level. Uh, of points because it just was not worth it for them to lose a single game against a pokey dad and then the their life is over. <laughs> no let's go to Australia's over here he's, he's just waiting to be like i'm a pokey dad like <laughs> i'm not thinking against pokey dads no. i'm basically a kidless pokey dad at this point like <laughs> I, I was actually gonna bring up so the elo system was still on the pokemon.com page like you could still see your elo and i remember this purely because after my top 16 at portland 2019 whatever year that was i was like ranked fifth or sixth and it was purely from a tournament where my two i lost twice once to danny altavia who was like number one or two right because i imagine he had some points and my other one was against a pokey dad (laughs) who i just remember had like a 1600 ranking which was the quote-unquote average right because he had done nothing that was where you started except archie's all over me on turn two (laughs) both times but i was like yeah i know i've both in the elo system that doesn't exist for me thankfully and the pokey dad part i still remember that pokey dad just staring at his opening hand for 20 minutes and then attaching 17 energies and one psychic to a Mewtwo and using cross division on all my Zeruas and just crying so many tears. <laughs> uh, the point about free entry too, um, kind of, uh, I, I, I paid $10 for a challenge this weekend. And I remember when people were outraged that regionals were $20, like people were And then so when mad. they were 30. Yep. And then and when it, they were 40. At what point, at what point, I know this is not a what if question, but at what point do regionals get too expensive to, to ha- have like people go, you know what, never mind. And then, I, I think it's going to be a number that you would get upset at. I agree. Because, I, I mean, agree. I, I, magic costs $110 to play now. And there's no more. shot, really. What's their pricing? I, I don't know that off the top okay. of my head. I just know that people were talking about the, the magic con and to get into the event. Uh, I believe the ne- it was nearing one hundred and ten dollars after taxes gosh. and fees. Oh my gosh, I'm paying. I paid one hundred and ten to get into Vancouver because my my dumb butt clicked the upgrade package because <laughs> I was so flustered about getting in. So I'm. Playing. I, I remember seeing that. Yeah, if anyone wants a burn marker for forty dollars, you know who to hit up. <laughs> I was actually so, so excited to buy the static seating. And I was like, all right, I'm going to do this. And then I was like, it's $350 extra dollars. I was like, oh, God, no. That's ridiculous. What is, what's your price point for static seating? What would you pay for static seating? I would have paid another 150 I think. $150 it's, it's just, line? In addition to the 70 yeah. Okay. Because, like, ooh, that seems so nice. <laughs> right? I've, I've heard a lot of parents, like, really like that option. Oh, for sure. Because, like, you can take care of your kid. And now, if the ELO system exists, we wouldn't have static seating. So, really, that's the... Uh, that's <laughs> that's the a, well, and I, I think, I I think for kinda, parents, it has... For know. sure. I, I think uh, for parents, the static seating thing, like, it, it gives your kid a point to always go back to in that yeah. giant room of people. And I think that has a lot of intrinsic value as well that would be for sure. for. I Yeah. So, I think, I think in, in general, though, the ELO... The, if if we had the same number of people with the ELO system now, I think you just see your local scene is just way weirder, like in general. I still think there are enough people go to regionals because of money, and because mm-hmm. like you know, like people like you and I who aren't chasing any worlds invites, like okay, cool, like I don't care about the worlds invite, but I think it's still rad to win ten grand. But am I gonna go like play in a challenge every single weekend? No. And I think the to the. Another what if is if if ELO still existed, I think you would see a lot of players show up to local events and then at like look and see who's there and then decide if they're going to play in the event. Um, Because I think if you like show up to a league challenge and there's eight players and you know that they all have a, a decent amount of points. So you're like wagering if you lose a game, how much you're going to wager. Um, I think that could actually be a decision or if it's like, ah, actually this room looks kind of soft and I don't know if it's worth it 
for me to to enter this tournament. So you favor wild. hard tournaments then? I think so. If it, 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 I would when if I was like eloing, I would mm-hmm. I would much rather favor like a a tournament of people that are all like well seasoned and at seventeen fifty than like half the room being like fresh sixteen hundreds. I think that brings up two points. One being, it, it's wild how that's like the reverse effect mm-hmm. because, like, nowadays people are like, oh, there's not enough people here. I don't want to play. Where, like, then it's like, oh, there's too many people here. I don't want to yep. play, which is kind of wild. I think the other thing, though, that, that would be intriguing because Pokemon is so big and popular now, like, it's we've never seen as many players, is I wonder if somewhere along the line, LGSs say this is a ELO capped tournament meaning that you have to have at least 1800 to play this weekend. Ooh, but then that's such a like that just feels like one of those play point requirements for things, right? Of just you shouldn't be I mean that is true. Maybe that would be the norm if that was suddenly a thing, but like that's disgusting to me. I think that would be a terrible terrible thing. Oh, and well it's it goes just it that just goes to show how bad Elo is. I mean is. true, yeah. Um <laughs> but like I think that's the James's point is that like if there's only people that like if I'm going in a tournament and I'm re- and I have two thousand and everyone else is two thousand, I don't risk as much. Yeah. As if I go into a room full of like baddies as twelve hundred because this game is so luck variance. Like chess, chess can handle it because chess is a purely skill game. Can, right. Can I but, point out for our younger listeners that baddie in this case means a negative connotation. Oh, so. <laughs> some, someone teaches high school, am I right? <laughs> so you walk into a league challenge full of baddies. Hey? <laughs> my so Lee, my my wife, still like every every so often she'll hear me talk with some friends, and she's like, I still don't understand if broken is good or bad. <laughs> I don't do think I. half of Twitter does either. <laughs> so. I so either. That was when I would pause. I was like, huh, like. It's like, I'm not entirely sure how to answer that. Yeah. It's yeah, entirely I mean, results oriented after the weekend. Like, <laughs> <laughs> my deck is broken on Friday where it's broken on Monday. <laughs> like, Oh boy. Um, anyway, I'm glad that we're not in ELO. <laughs> I think that, I think that our current system needs a lot of revamping. Oh, um, but you know, it's, yeah. The, the Pokemon think, company just cares about people playing their game. They don't care about the quality of life that the players have, as long as they get you hooked. And I think anything that incentivizes people to play the game instead of incentivizing them to either drop from tournaments that they're actively winning or incentivizing them to not play in Pokemon tournaments, I feel like that's just it. Like, mm-hmm. It's good that like Pokemon has that as their vision statement of like just get people to play. Yeah. Like, just come, just play, just do, like I love that as like a direction. It's it's rough though when you get into that and then you spend some time in it and you're like, okay, you cared about me two months ago, or two years ago when I started, but now it feels weird. And I'm not a hundred percent sure on the year that this switched over, but I'm pretty sure that for at least most of the Elo years it was Pokemon organized play, and then after Elo it was play Pokemon, as what the organized like organized play was called. And I think that might tie into it. Hmm. Probably. I don't remember. I, I, it's close, right? It's, yeah, it's around that area. We can, we can dig up some shiny energies and check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you looking for temporal forces, or do you want to go shiny hunting with some Paldean fates? We'll be sure to check out tabletopvillage.com and use code MELLOW5 to get 5% off your order for Temporal Forces, Paldean fates, or any other product, sleeve, etc. that you are looking for. Not only does it support the podcast and you get some good cards, but you are helping out a family-owned Pokemon first business as well. Again, tabletopvillage.com, code MELLOW and the number 5, M-E-L-L-O-W, and the number 5. Anyway, back to the show. So the next what if that we had uh, already mentioned, and this is potentially a pretty big one, and I'm going to be honest, I don't entirely know how to word this one because we're talking about a what if scenario of something that was actually very large to the entire human race, but it is a what if the pandemic never occurred in the sense of the Pokemon trading card game? Of course, right? That's the big one. So yeah. March 2020, they set organized play, closed off everything, even though some places already been doing it. And then for those of you that forgot, it was a couple of years before organized play came back with Salt Lake City coming back in 2022 April. This was around my birthday. It was either end of March or middle of April. And then somewhere in between there, every Pokemon card got bought up. And Play Limitless was launched and tons of other stuff. So 
Alex, I know you want to go with this in one way, James. I don't know which way you want to go with it, but you can go off of Alex's. Sure. What would the Pokemon trading card game scene be like had that never happened? Had 2020 never occurred and COVID-19 never taken place? Yeah, uh, I'm going to be I'm going to be straight up honest. I don't think we I don't think we're I think we're at half of what we're at now. Uh, The trend was not upward as it were, right? When we, I don't know how many people were playing in 2019, 2020 that are listening, but like the trend was not like everyone jump in, we're, we're, we're doing this thing. Um, and it wasn't until all of the Twitch streamers and YouTubers started getting their hands on uh, old Pokemon packs and ripping those open yeah. that like we actually started to see me- bumps and meaningful differences and changes, right? Um so I think, like, to purely answer the question at, at one thing, I think we are back where we were at the end of that format. We also get, like, two worlds formats that, like, like from a lot of, like, historians' perspectives, not that great. And so you don't have a lot of, like, hype mm-hmm. for those big events either. Um, and so it's, it's, it's so weird to say that, like, the answer to what if the pandemic didn't happen, I'd be like, well, the three of us probably wouldn't be sitting here having this conversation. Well, I can like, guarantee you that because I never would have started creating content <laughs> had I not had so much free time. And I would have never moved to Seattle uh, to hang out. Like, <laughs> I would probably still be playing. So see, there you go. <laughs> you say that until you remember that ADP Zashian was the dominant deck. When the pandemic occurred, I would like to remind everyone, OCIC had just happened. ADP yeah. Zacian was dominant. The best players in the world had all played it. It was everywhere in top 32. You know what the other fun decks in top 32 were? We had Desi Goons, which for everyone who doesn't know, was a VEX, sorry, VGX lock and basic lock deck. And we had Cinchino Mill had just started to exist and oh, yeah. would turn out to be it would turn out to be the first standard format ban mm-hmm. in years. And that was what a fun online <laughs> that card got banned. Like that is unreal to think of how dominant that card actually was, right? So that format was bad, bad, Not bad. Good. <laughs> it's weird. It's weird enough that like I don't, I don't think that any of the cards that Creatures has come out with since then would have been any different. Like I don't think Creatures like blinked two eyes. They're like, oh yeah, we're just gonna keep making what we make. Whether like I don't think I don't think they truly take like the results and then like print cards as much as like all this mu hate <laughs> stuff that is like trickled out here and there. Like I don't I don't think any of that stuff changes. I think they knew Mew was enough. good, right? Like that's my that's my yeah. vibe with that one. Like they knew Mew was good and so they just kept printing stuff because they're like, well, well they have we need these. I mean they've come out and said that like they want like they really want to focus in on like printing viable decks in a set Mm -hmm. just in itself right and the goal of that is i I can't remember what i was watching an interview two three years ago where they said like we we want the like the first time regionals player to feel like they can win the game like win the whole thing Mm -hmm. they've succeeded (laughs) yeah like they did that so you know um there's there's good and bad with that but i think the short the short version of the pandemic thing is that like the boom doesn't happen prices of cars don't go up um my master sets aren't worth nearly as much as they are uh if anyone wants to buy some master sets hit your boy up uh (laughs) shameless plug uh (laughs) that's fair you know what to find me Uh, um you know like we're all back in blissful ignorance and we don't tell people that we play pokemon and now we do so I, I think cool. the biggest thing design wise that would change is maybe not the effects of the cards or what they do, but I do think that if like if the tag team things hadn't happened or they had not cared, it the numbers, like the, the actual HP of cards, because mm-hmm. I don't think we see V Maxes with that level of HP if that's not a direct response to that era. Like maybe the V Maxes do exist and maybe they are three prizes, but I don't know if they are 330 HP or 310 HP every time if they didn't have to respond to these 280 HP basics that they had. Because the, sca- the the jump from pre-tag teams to tag teams 
to post tag teams. Like the the number like people think the numbers are bad now, but the jump between tag teams to now is so much less than like real Pokemon cards and then when they printed tag teams. What's so that? What's that Jaywitz video? There's a Jaywitz video mm. that came out that uh, talked about like the he says something explosion, right? Like um like I creep explosion or something. I don't remember. What okay. It yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and like the black and white one being the uh, old heads biggest egregiousness of like now there's 130 hp basic pokemon yeah um and then less than a year later 180 hp uh i would i i this might be a a, a side tangent conversation is that more egregious or is the jump from uh team up to sword and shield b maxes a worse egregious um slight on the pokemon world which is worse? I I don't know which is worse. I think the problem is that none of it had to happen. None of it, because right. you have you take something like you take something like the EX block, right? The entire EX block, the capital EX, while, correct? Like yeah, uh, lowercase, the lowercase EX block. Oh, oh, four, oh, six. oh okay. Like, okay. Yeah, the original Ruby Sapphire. Lowercase. Okay. Yeah, like that whole block until you hit Diamond and Pearl is very much scaled like exs have uh, stage two exs have 150 hp in this the first set they're printed in in like sandstorm or whatever and then you have stage two exs with 150 hp four and a half years later and it's just a flat line and yes the cards from 2007 are better than the cards from 2003 but the numbers are very similar in what you're doing in the game mm -hmm. and i think that Diamond and Pearl, you saw now you got that you started seeing the number 130 on on stage twos with Empoleon and things like that. That now you saw stage ones now have 90 HP sometimes. It's whoa, um, and unthinkable. Yeah, but then I totally agree. Black and white is when it's like a basic non EX Pokemon was 100 HP. It was like most of the time and it in wasn't good. Right. Yeah, and usually it had some effect that was like, if you don't do cartwheels in front of your opponent and then high-five them four to five times, you can't attack. Like, <laughs> and, and, But then you just get these format-defining, in-base black and white, 130 HP guys that do 120 damage. And it's like, what is ha what happened here? Like the, the good old days when plus power was, was meta-relevant and important. Yeah. Ah. What a what a what a time to be alive! Hey, Vi yeah, much Vitality less, bands much come less. back. Yeah, I mean, wildly enough, right? <laughs> it's crazy. So I don't know if that's on purpose or not, though. Like I, I don't want to give creatures and the the design team too much credit. Um, but no, it's I I mean it's 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 wild. So it, to go back to the whole, uh, what if the pandemic? What if the pandemic and this power creep and stuff? Like I I think it's proven that. They just like power creeping their game no matter what. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, I mean, tag teams were clearly a mistake. Hey, like, that's hey, what hey, started it. We love it. Pikaram. No, no, no. We love no, 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 no. I Shh. like Pikaram. <laughs> <laughs> I played so I, much Sunlot this weekend, and oh, I was... I hate I was like, I, that format's so mediocre. I'm sorry. I say oh, this to you every time. I think that format's so mediocre. It's fine. That's it's so fine. Get in the comments. Get in the comments, people. Some lot is not a bad format. I didn't say bad. It's a mediocre. Like it. it is. I'll say, I'll not say, a mediocre I'll say bad. format. <laughs> Gosh. Oh. I like what I like. No, no, that's fair. But like, <laughs> I think so. Here's here's my thing about what if the pandemic didn't happen. I think, and this is a slightly different thing from power creep and all that. I think that what you see with limitless, I think limitless is mm -hmm. such a defining. And I'm going to start this by saying that I think that Limitless is one of the best things to ever happen to the Pokemon community. Quick shout Probably. out. I'm a member of their Patreon. Anyone else who uses their services and can afford it, sign up for their Patreon. <laughs> anyway, go for I, I support that entirely. I think that what Robin and the entire Limitless team have done across the, what I was going to say last few years, but I guess it's been longer than that now. But Limitless changing the game and making it so much more accessible to so many more people, creating the avenues that have happened for so many community ran tournaments to take place uh and for everything there's so many good things and 
but what I'm going to say is it the game itself would be completely different in other ways as well. Not only would you not have Limitless and you would not have these online tournaments. There were no online. We had PTCGO for 10 years. I never played in an online tournament before Limitless. Oh, those were gross. I stayed away from those things. Yeah, if, someone, like, if someone said that, you'd be like, oh, don't talk to me, dude. Like, Yeah. People, oh, James, you want to play in my online tournament? This is blocked. Uh, <laughs> like... Uh, but, like, the biggest thing with Limitless and how it's changed the game, I think, is accessibility. Mm -hmm. You have infinite accessibility to so many tournament results because back in my day, there was a few Pokemon tournaments every weekend. And then those five days in the middle of the week, nothing happened. And now, while we're talking, there's probably seven Pokemon tournaments happening on the internet at the same time right now on Limitless. Like... A 117 person tournament just finished. And before that, yep. an 88 person. And before that, a 94. All on the same day. And that's, and that's how large regionals were back then. <laughs> yeah. And, and so I think that the accessibility is crazy. And I think that what has happened, and this is maybe a downside of the accessibility, is I think that formats become solved mm -hmm. infinitely quicker. Yes. And I think that that does create some negatives for the game mm -hmm. in that the game does not feel as fresh. We talked at the beginning of the podcast about how we're in a little bit of a dead period and how it feels like we've been playing the same format for six months. That wasn't the case for 20 years or more be in most like formats because not only were there not, there's more tournaments happening today than what happened in most formats in the game's history. Like, and that's a crazy thing to think about. So there's so much more data. There's so many more deck lists. So much, like, within two weeks, a, a lot of the cores of decks, like, when did that Charizard list that everyone has now topped their regional with get figured out? I keep, everyone keeps posting on Twitter mm -hmm. and they're like, look at this list of 97 people that have topped with the same 60 cards in the last two months. That never would have happened because no one would have a deck list back then. Mm -hmm. like, it makes me it makes me so like curious and so like there needs to be a way for this to happen where we get the limitless hive mind on all of these past unsolved formats. Because there are so many of them that are considered good that are still unsolved. I mean, like, RSBK is, like, the one that people point to, right? And, like, the people are still coming up with ideas. And they yeah. haven't... And, like, that's the most... Like, the spotlight is on that format the most for past formats, and people, like, are still coming up with crazy, kooky ideas, right? Imagine if we had all those people that are coming up with this... the Those 97 people that played that Charizard list. What if they're playing... Uh, what if they all got some Stantlers sleeved up and just yeah. are ruining everything? Like... To go off of like, that, you hear all the time where people who are like reminiscing of the past will mention like, oh, back then we played one Ultra Ball, right? Or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it's all it's never like, oh, we were incorrect and the meta wasn't solved and things like that. It's like, oh, that's just that was just correct then, completely negating the no, <laughs> that's not how tournaments yeah, worked no, back then. Yeah. I and I will be the first to admit, I look at like my old deck lists and I'm like, sheesh, this guy is stinky. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know what to tell anybody. Like, there's so many tournaments that I've won or done well at in my history. And now looking back with what I know now and how we know how to build decks now, even if you're applying that to past formats, it's like, Ugh, did you just start out, pal? Like, you need a little help? <laughs> I've always I've always wanted to have the idea, and if any content creators are out there and have infinite time on their hands, uh, and and my phone number, here is a great idea for you for free. I think it would be a very interesting thing to do a uh, a format, not even a format by format, like like replay of the entire history of Pokemon again, like with set releases in there. So like one week you play this format and then you sprinkle the new set on there and then you play it again and then you sprinkle the new format and play it again but instead of waiting three months between releases you're waiting a week between releases and have them throw Alvad out on twitter and see what happens i want to mention and this was mentioned in the last podcast jake gearhart uh listened 
or is going to start a Medify class. And Alex, I know that you're out because you're not going to pay money. But the thing he's going to do is go back to a format, right? And he's going to teach deck building by, okay, net deck. And then they play games and they're like, well, where are we improving this list? And the meta is going to evolve in the class as they improve on these old lists of bad decks and things like that. So, so it, is it okay? So it, I've I've tried to get this going. I mm-hmm. wrote a Pokey Beach article about something similar to this idea, like in 2017, and I've always wanted someone to take it and run the reins with it. And it's the whole like you roll four random sets. Mm-hmm. Right, you roll four sets, and that's not even a format that you can net deck with. That's one where you have to like come up with your own thing in those four sets, play it, and then look at like, oh, here's what we did wrong. Let's try it again. If you really want to like go really into deck building, like too much. I work. think that's the it's too much work, but that's like it's <laughs> I've oh it's the ultimate way to do it though, and someone's got to do it because I ah uh, I'd take a big old piece of that pie. <laughs> Regardless, I, I, the limitless hive mind that we brought up, like with accessibility determinants and everything, like has been, w- like, like you, like you said, one of the best things to happen to Pokemon, and I dare say the best thing to happen to Pokemon probably. I think there's a, I think I'm not gonna argue against that. I, I would, I, I'm not gonna go as far to say that, but I have no qualms with anyone saying that. Yeah. Um. So I. Those if the limitless hive mind can breathe life into Pokemon and get two thousand people to elbow and slaughter each other to get into a tournament, can that hive mind also do some stuff for retro formats? <laughs> I, I think the biggest problem is having somewhere for people to play the retro formats. Yeah. So TPCI just needs to like you know develop that. Yeah, what if there was, like, an online client where you could play the Pokemon trading card game? Oh my gosh, what if there was an online thing that, like, has had been around since HeartGold SoulSilver and you could do some of those? What? Like, what with the HeartGold SoulSilver cards? Like, in the game already. Wow, like, crimes? To... Yeah. That's you don't even so have to, like, exciting. recode that and stuff? Like, what if that was still, like, a, a thing? It just, like, exists, and then you yeah. just delete it. <laughs> so something i want to add to the uh what if what the, if what if the pandemic had never occurred uh there's obviously the like the lack of the pokemon boom that alex mentioned jane mentioned the lack of information because i mean like i said we have three let's just say 100 person tournaments 97 is close enough 300 people tournaments today that we can gather data from i can go on limitless click on you know decks and i can get charizard's matchup spread and everything has a sample size of 600 games right super cool i think the biggest thing to me is the formats of the pandemic would have been seen very differently. And I think most people, like some people who played in those formats are like, oh yeah, this one was fun. I think some of them were actually proper fun. And some of them were, people would have quit if this was something beyond, many people would have quit if this was something beyond, I'm going to play online, I'm going to use my keys to make the Players Cup, things like that. We had truly, like underrated how bad team up to vivid voltage was as a format and i think that's something that people just kind of underestimate and we would be talking about it so much more how bad team up to sword and shield was how bad team up to vivid voltage was how just truly truly terrible these things were and if you're wondering what was team up to vivid voltage mellow um picaram was still incredibly dominant even though it shouldn't have been because colossal just came out uh it turned his v max <laughs> i know Eternus V Max was doing its thing, which was supposed to OCO all the tag teams, and somehow it still lost to plenty of tag teams. Um, we had ADP Zacian, which was just the the deck of all times. It is just disgusting that thing ever existed. So I think we really underestimate that. But I'd also like to say, I think the second Pog tournament, which was the second Worlds that we didn't get, would have been seen as one of the not one of the best formats. That's no, no, no we're going to go that. A fun format that people would have enjoyed playing more of. And what was good then? So we had Luke Metal Zacian was a good deck. We had Mewtwo and Mew Dark, which was with the Weavile GX and the Tyranitar tag team and things like that. We had... Oh, De- they had Guzzlord from from Cosmic? Yeah, that... Yeah, and Cineror GX. I, Ice Rider and yeah. Lutheon as well were also like they were they were fine they were just decks and the inteleon engine kind of had just started to exist and hadn't been fully hashed out yet i think 
we look at these terrible formats, they were worse than we imagined, but there were also some fun formats in that time that I think is not going to get the respect that they deserve of like, there was some fun gameplay. And I know James going to roll your eyes because tag teams valid. Well, but I will say, <laughs> yeah. I will say though, that like we, I think we get a lot of those, those little nuggets of like quote unquote good formats mm-hmm. in there because the because of going back to the limitless thing because the formats also moved so quickly that the moment something was introduced it was very easily to it was very easy to pass judgment if it's good or bad or not Mm -hmm. right yeah whereas like if we didn't have that right you're and that was that was exactly your thesis on that is that like we look at these formats very very differently yeah because we don't pass the judgment as quickly and i think there are there are old uh, people that look at retro formats that play it like two years from now are going to like, oh, yeah, 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 let's look back at this. But now those same people are going to be like, oh, Limitless did all of our work for us. Never mind. Or heck yeah, mm-hmm. right? Like, so I think I think you're right. Like, big time. Big I time think if that. you search my Twitter for the terms <laughs> ADP and money, I, I talked at length about how a lot of the time during those years, if people would be like, oh, look at how diverse this format is, and they post a top eight, and it's like, ADP is only three of the top eight. And they're like, ADP isn't that bad. And I'd be like, get the best players in the world playing ADP for money and then talk to me about how good this tar- this format is. Like, And that also said something that I've always found interesting, no matter how bad a format is, whether it's good, bad, the worst format of all time, like everything is to every two weeks, it doesn't matter. Once a format stops being played for money, Playing the Pokemon trading card game is fun. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. And if you are playing it in an isolated scenario of this matchup versus this matchup, and you don't have to worry about ADP during the times that it was too good or whatever, mm-hmm. Pokemon as a game is fun. It does not matter which format it is, in my opinion. I think that you, oh, every single format in Pokemon's history, even like gym challenge stuff, is fun if you just are playing Pokemon with your friends, like, and there's nothing on the line or something that you're trying to root for. No, me first, Gym Alex. Challenge. I would like to point out Sun and Moon Lost Thunder perfectly fits what James said. Now, go for it. <laughs> yeah, Gym Challenge being, of course, the set Gym Challenge. No yeah. shade at oh. Andrew Mahone. I just want to. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. That's also yeah. a good call. Yeah. Gym Leader Challenge yeah. is a different <laughs> uh, is a format. Gym Challenge yeah, is a set. Yeah. Yeah. I should have thought about that. I'm not. <laughs> Please don't tweet me about Gym Leader Challenge. Just- this podcast is sponsored by TC Evolutions. TC Evolutions offers the finest quality crafted damage counters, ability use markers, and V Star markers out there. So if you're looking to beat your opponents in style, be sure to check out tcevolutions.com and use code LAKE10 for 10% off your order. Anyway, back to the show. So one more thing about if the pandemic never occurred. And James, are you listening to this part? Because this is going to be for your soapbox real quick. Oh, I'm excited. I love soap. Right when the pandemic had occurred, Scoop Up Net was released. Who Expanded, was completely ignored, and therefore is now, it's unofficially gone. I think (laughs) had the pandemic never occurred, Expanded would have continued to see support. Scoop Up Net would have gotten banned almost immediately ideally immediately but god forbid there was a tournament where you were able to scoop up net shaman or sorry scoop net didn't get banned shaman got banned initially and then scoop up net eventually got banned i think expanded would would have still stayed and alex is going to disagree with me here i disagree with that please i i think oh i think i think pokemon and the the balancing team kind of threw their hands up in the air and they're like we don't know how to balance expanded Mm -hmm. um and i know that you wrote this what if question either some chat right like what if pokemon never had rotations um it, like <laughs> uh like now granted i think i think when they did all of the rule changes and new player balances in 2010 with the really black and white to make everything kind of more uniform <laughs> i think that's like kind of where you have to like restart because everything before that is too muddy but like 2010 on if there was no rotation they have proven time like they have proven that they don't quite know how to balance their game Mm -hmm. um and i just i think that you would just see bigger power creep but i think that they kind of like got to the point where they were banning so many cards and because like we said earlier the tpci's like whole main goal is just to get people to play pokemon that bans 
to them seem too confusing for the for the masses, which is like true because try selling a seven year old you can't play that card because it's banned. Mm -hmm. Like I've done that plenty of times, and like they just don't understand. Like, oh, you can't play that card because it's rotated. You can't play that card because it's banned. They want to make stuff as transparent as possible, and so I think they took this chance to say, "Oh, expanded." Uh, never mind. Like, <laughs> you know. See, but then are they never get that chance if they're suddenly like, "Oh, look, no longer supported format." GGS. But I also just think that they. I think they just do the same exact thing. I see the same posts happen and everything. They're just like, hey, every regional is just standard this year. And like, that's it. They don't, they still, they, I think they still say the same exact things, but mm -hmm. they don't, they don't get the, the, the hide behind the, oh, competitive Pokemon's done right now, right? I did that's the, thing. My heart still loves the secondary format. And during times like this, where, hey, we could be having an expanded podcast. Instead, I'm talking to you two about all this stuff, right? So, <laughs> um, look, as long as, we're all, <laughs> as long as we're all playing Pokemon, man, as long as you're playing Pokemon, we should be happy. You're not wrong. I, I think it's interesting that Japan still has 800 plus people expanded tournaments mm -hmm. to this day in the current format. Uh, with the same ban list that hasn't been touched since the vid voltage was released. Um, I do believe I they think... got, wasn't there very recently scoop of net plus something? Yes, banned? Sorry, but you're right. It's essentially yeah. unchanged. I, I think it had gone unchanged from vivid voltage until like the last six months mm -hmm. because, um, but I know that like they are currently playing like Lugia with double dragon energy legal. And, and, and that's and not even, that's not the only deck. D imagine that. Like in these 800 person plus tournaments, dr double drag, you can Wally Alugia V Max or whatever it is into play immediately, and Archeops out double dragon energy. And there are other decks to play. That's crazy <laughs> to me. I want to play that format right now. Did you see if the only deck? I could? Yes, I want to play it. So, listeners, <laughs> if you want to be sold on Expanded, Bunnelby can attack twice. For TM Evo, you can get any Stage 2 out, which includes some <laughs> of the most degenerate cards of all time. In fact, two of them, because you target two of your Pokemon. So, ooh, Expanded's a format, man. <laughs> wow. We built, a, we built a Lola format a couple months back where it was the entire Alola block, and that has some just nutty Wild Wild West stuff. And I was sitting here and I was just like, but what if this also had Versus Seeker? And like the possibilities just endless. I think the biggest problem with Expanded from a gameplay standpoint is that TPCI has never taken the effort to make Expanded accessible to the masses. Mm -hmm. I think that I agree entirely with Alex's point about accessibility and that for a format of a competitive card game to truly succeed and flourish, it needs to be expanded to both people who really love in and seven-year-olds. It needs to appeal to both in some way. And I think that in Japan, you we've seen throughout the years, they'll put Computer Search and Versus Seeker as bonus cards in their equivalent of Elite Trainer boxes. To this day, that you'll see Cynthia reprints and, and all of these staples as like, upgrade this deck into an expanded variant with these 15 cards that come with your starter deck. Mm -hmm. And all of these things that you've seen Pokemon in Japan do to make the expanded format viable and accessible to all, as opposed to here where cards get printed and then they never get reprinted. And the entirety of the time that we had expanded, unless something got reprinted in standard, nothing got reprinted for expanded other than a few like weird decks that just would have like a versus seeker reprint or something in it and not really touch the the true like problems or accessible cards like we saw things like $15 Zerua from Dark Explorers when four of them. was a thing we we uh. saw execute from plasma being $10 each or more bought two like, of them <laughs> All yeah, all of these staples in Expanded that just never got reprinted, and it all it would take would be a set per year or a like collection per year that's like Expanded Masters, and you have access to like you could print new art on X Y Trevenant, and then and you get collectors you into it. You can also dump all of these arts that we don't get 
like that Japan gets. Like when they got the full art red, green, and blue, when they got the alternate art Dusk Noir Trevenant mm-hmm. GX or whatever that was, uh, and all of these full art Weavile. I'm so mad to this day because I love dark Pokemon and I loved the dark deck and expanded for so many years. And we just didn't get full art Weavile GX in America for some reason because they hate me, I guess. Like, they but in Japan, it exists. <laughs> yeah, they yeah, call now, us. Oh, I, I believe me. I know. <laughs> but yeah, like, I, you could put these types of things in this set, have an appeal to collectors who are just... Uh, I hate to break it to the people that are listening to this podcast that just play the Pokemon trading card game. So many people buy Pokemon cards that do not care. Like, they're just going to buy Pokemon cards that have pictures on them, and it doesn't even really matter what the pictures on them are either. But Go to, go to TikTok, oh, not TikTok, but go to, like, Whatnot, go to Drip, and watch their stream for, like, 10 minutes. Anyone's stream. Yeah, you go think a lot, lot of people show up to regionals to play Roaring Moon. Oh, <laughs> let me tell you how many people are at Walmart right now. Like... <laughs> I, and I think I, you could make these sets that are for expanded, reprint expanded staples, make a format accessible, have it sell to people who are just opening Pokemon packs on whatnot and Mercari anyway, and then also get these staples into the hands of players, grow a format rather than price people out, and also have it be more accessible. But until unless they were to make it more accessible, I don't even want them to bring, bring expanded back. And that's and that's what I've always thought about, like like how do the the question sometimes comes up of like how do you fix power creep in Pokemon, right? Because like quite clearly it, it's happened, um, and it's always a, it's a hard reset. You have to hard reset it. And then the argument is, well, no one would buy that because everything would be like weaker. It's like, well, just put some shiny art on there. Like it's been proven that people want to buy like the cool illustration arts and gold stuff. So just make everything that. And now people want to buy that, and that's how you fix power creep. That's how you gain accessibility to all cards. Like, there's a lot of like really creative things you can do, and the over under on that happening is insanely low. <laughs> hey, typical regional attendee, how many boxes of the last set did you purchase? Boxes, oh, probably none. That's really interesting. So, but yet, Pokemon cards sold. That's crazy. Like, that's really interesting to me. It's it it's a it's a mind opening experience to operate a card store. Correct. I after agree. yeah, after being a player for so long as yeah. you are more than aware of. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, we we're, we're here we you and I are here with with Mello talking to the smallest piece of the Pokemon pie in terms of monetary gain. And w- while we may be loud and while we may be mighty about fix our game, 90% of people don't play the game that own a Pokemon card. Yeah. If you're on YouTube, you can also see this, right? Like this video has probably several hundred views. Then you go to Celio's network, several thousand. And then you go to uh, Leon Hart or Real Breaking Nate or something like that. And you're talking about millions. Exactly. Hundreds of thousands, millions of views. Uh, there's a pretty big difference, right, between Celio's network, big, Tricky Jim, very big, and then pack openers, which are real YouTubers. <laughs> like it's wild, yeah, it's wild. Like these people are mainstream, recommended to people who are on a suggested page, right? Gameplay does yep. not get suggested to randos on a recommended page on YouTube. It is more likely that an average Pokemon fan has seen Leonhart open up a Sky Ridge pack than they are to know what a Roaring Moon is. Hundred <laughs> percent. I mean, Roaring Moon is a Pokemon, right? Like, that's what I've been told. Tell me, tell me the like. You ask any of those people. Tell me like anything on that card. Tell me how much HP it has or the name of the attack. Right. I mean, fair. They, they wouldn't. They wouldn't. That you could. I mean, tell me what they know how much is, damage right? base set Charizard does though. Hundred. It is hundred. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> I was like, oh no, I don't think I know that. <laughs> What's the name of the attack though? Flame? Me? Fire Forever. Fi- fire spin. No. Fire spin. Is it fire spin? <laughs> it's fire spin. Okay, cool. I you said fire bit. And I was like, yep. <laughs> you got it. you nailed it, bud. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's fire bit. I, I know its abilities turn everything into mm-hmm. energy burn. Yeah, because on the Pokemon trading card game for Game Boy. In order to make it hard mode, I built a rain dance Charizard deck. 
It was great. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So that's a quick aside. Anyway, uh, Alex and James, thank you so much for joining us on <laughs> what it? was. Yeah. <laughs> what was. Anyway. All right, Chad. Okay. I'm going to need you to comment down below if you want to hear us ramble again because okay. I feel that I've been lied to. There's a giant <laughs> list below us. We didn't even get to, I, I, was, I got one queued up. And it was like, what if the turn one rules were different? Oh, that, that would just be bad. Like oh well like over the years like oh. what if we had like oh six in twenty fifteen and what if we had now in back then like because they've changed so much so like there's eras that are probably like either way better or way worse if you change the turn one rules Archie stories doesn't exist these days. like if you had these days rules right Lily Lily is like a is a terrible card listeners if you enjoy this episode and want more a few ways you can do it to us. <laughs> uh twitter dms at lake of rage pod you can comment on a youtube video or join the discord which is in the description of all podcasting apps things like that let me know because i'm super oh, we do actually have a very large list of other i think very good what if scenarios unfortunately i have to go to work in the morning so if you like this episode <laughs> how much how much how much does it cost for you to call into work tomorrow <laughs> So if you like this episode, be sure to let me know specifically, I guess. You also let these two know, but let me know, and I will happily bring them back in the near future. Uh, Alex, where can the people find you if they want more from you? Uh, do I also get shout-outs after this, or is this my last This is your, this is your shout-outs as well, yes. Last oh, okay, cool. All right, sorry, I, I didn't want to know what my limitations were. Uh, <laughs> they can find me on at Spokane Pokemon on, on X, uh, or... Anywhere else, if you search my name, I don't know. I'm not online that often. Uh, you can find me on uh, cubecoga.net slash cube slash cook cubes, spelled K-O-C-H. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook Marketplace selling my entire master sets, all of them, every single master set I own from black and white till now. Buy them. Uh, big shout out to Nathan Shaw. He told me to. Uh, and... Um, Big shout out to my OSRS gains right now. I'm making about 100k strength an hour doing Nightmare Zone currently with full Durox and everything. It's great. Uh, and then shout out to James. <laughs> James, where can the people find you in any uh, shout outs for your current old school RuneScape mining? Is that what I think that meant? Whoa, you were close. Okay. I understood none of those words. Uh, hey, everybody, if you want to talk to me or see me talk, uh, you can find me at twitter.com slash Wames Games or at Wames Games, which is really interesting considering Wames don't game no mo. Uh, you did just win a Dragon Ball tournament. It, I did also, just win a Dragon Ball tournament. It's a very solid Twitter, though. I will I will say this, that, mm -hmm. that James's Twitter is is one of the more solid pokey Twitters out there. I, I enjoy tweeting about the Pokemon trading card game, which I no longer play. I enjoy tweeting pictures of Taylor Swift. It's great. <laughs> We have a great time over there. Shout out to Taylor Swift. Uh, shout out to Fallout Boy. Uh, and uh, I'm going on Friday to their concert. I'm so excited. What? Oh yeah. They're in town. They're in town. Please let me know. Please let me know. Message me about that and let me know how that goes. I will for I, sure. They're my favorite of everything. I, I'm getting to see them at when we were young later in the year. I'm going out to Vegas. Okay, that is probably way cooler. But <laughs> I'm so excited I, I, for this. It's all fun. Yeah. No, for sure. <laughs> Right. But yeah, shout out to everybody and, and shout out to Kevin for having me on. Thank you. Uh, if you've made it this far, a shout out to you listeners, <laughs> but uh, this is our no, 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 no this is podcast. Follow us. Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube at Mellow underscore Magikarp. Follow at Lake of Rage Pod. Um, what else? Please let me know if you would like these two back, because I'm always welcome to have more fun episodes instead of just talk about Charizard's the most played deck, then Tina, then whatever for the next six weeks and alex has one more thing he would like to say i, forgot, I, I have one i have a podcast too it's too too many i'm sorry i forgot to shout it out because i haven't been on an episode in a month but too too many sorry listen i don't have a podcast <laughs> please rate and review Wait, the show we should start a podcast oh my gosh <gasps> please episodes are five hours long <laughs> Rate and review the show wherever you listen. Thumbs up on YouTube. All that good stuff. This has been another episode of the Lake of Rage podcast. We'll catch you all next week.